Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make a really fun waving pull tab card and we're going to make this as a birthday card. So let's go ahead and get started. So for stamps we're using this set, we're using that closed box, the ribbon and bow, and then that string we'll be using later on. And we've got the coordinating dies as well. And this set is the special delivery box add-on set from Lawn Fawn. For paper, I'm using the Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock. It's a 100 pound weight. And for ink, I'm using the Finesse Spectrum Noir Alcohol Proof Ink. And this is called Noir Black. We're going to go ahead and use these acrylic blocks to do our stamping. These are from Hero Arts. And you can see you get three different sizes in this Small Blocks Trio set. So let's start by stamping our closed box. And I'm going to stamp six of these. And then we're going to stamp the bow that goes around the box and we're going to stamp six of those as well. To do my coloring, I'm going to be using my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers and I'll be using these colors here. And I'll just be mixing up all of these colors on all of these packages. So I'll, let me just show you one. I'm starting with the Coral Blend and you get the three tones. You get the light, medium, and dark. And the light is on one end and we're gonna start with that. Then you go to the middle of the pen and that gives you your medium color. And then you go to the, flip the pen around and go to the other end and that gives you the darkest tone. I'm going back to the light tone and blending that out. So I'm going to do the same thing here for the sides and the top. Just putting a little shadow around those corners there. So these markers are really easy to use because all the uh, color blending has been done for you. So, and they are marked on the sides as far as what color, the number, the alphanumeric uh, code as well. So now I'm using that citrus blend and I'm going to do the ribbon. And again, I'm just going to mix up all of those colors that I showed you on all of these boxes. So I won't show you all of them. Just going to show you what I did here for the ribbon. And then for the center of the bows, I'm using the orange blend. And again, I'll use the light first, a little bit of the medium, and then the dark in the center. And then I'll just blend that all out with the lightest color. So again, I'm going to mix and match all of those. So I'm grabbing the coordinating die. I'm taping that down with a little bit of purple tape. And I'm going to run these through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. Now once I have that cut, I'll take the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And I'm going to go ahead and attach that ribbon to my box. And again, I'll do that for all of them. And then I'm going to use my Uniball Signo White Gel Pen to add a little highlight to the ribbons on all of these boxes. So here's a look at all of those little boxes completed. Now I've got a standard A2 size card, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half, and that's a top folding card. And I'm going to be grabbing this largest die from the outside in stitched rectangle stackables dies. Again, I'm taping that down with a little bit of purple tape. I want to make sure it's nice and straight here. And then I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. And I'm going to cut this plaid paper. And then I'll use a, the next largest die from that same die set and use this blue plaid paper. And these papers are both coming from the Perfectly Plaid Petite Paper Pack. And this has come out recently as a remix pad. So I'll, I'll list all of that down below for you and I'll list all of the supplies on my blog as well. So I also die cut a second panel the same size as the blue plaid out of some 100 pound cardstock. I'm going to put plenty of tape or glue on this and attach these two together. And that'll just thicken up this panel a little bit.
And then for ink, I'm using the Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of color all the way around the edges here. I wanted to create the look of a sky, but I did wanna incorporate that plaid color in a little bit. So I'm just gonna tone that down by using the Salty Ocean ink right around the edges. And that'll just give us the effect of sky here. So I'm just blending that in. And you can see that up close. Now to add a little more interest to this panel, I'm using my white gesso and my distress sprayer. So I've added a little bit of that gesso to my glass media mat. I'm spritzing it with a little bit of water from the distress sprayer. And with a small paintbrush, I'm just gonna go ahead and spatter this panel. And again, this is just gonna add a little bit more interest here to our sky. So now that that's all set, I'm going to this stamp set here. We're gonna use that little chick and the wings and the coordinating dies for the wings and for the chick. And then we're also gonna use that little die there that cuts the slots out of the card to create our little pull tab. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to stamp the little bird and I'll color that in with pale pink, orange and citrus blends. And again, these are the tri-blend markers. I'm starting with the pink and then I'm gonna do the nose with the orange. Again, light, medium, dark and then I'll go back to that light and blend that out. And then for the little bird, I'm using that citrus color. I'll keep the two sides the darkest, so I'm gonna put the light all over. Then I'll come in with that little bit of that darker, the medium color on the two sides. And then I'll add that darkest color right along the edges there and along the bottom as well. And then I'll go back to that lighter end and just blend that in together. Now for the, for the little feet there, I'm just gonna use that orange and I'll just use the lightest color here and just color those in. So next I'm going to uh, stamp two sets of the wings and I want that second set of wings there, the second one down. And I'm going to go ahead and use that same cardstock we used before. I had only stamped these once, but you do, it's much easier if you stamp these two times because we're gonna be die cutting them separate, the left side and the right side. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. So again, I'll, I'll stamp two sets of these and then for this one, I just need to color in the right side. I'm going light, medium, and dark. And then back to the light. And I'll do the same thing for the other set of wings and I'll just do the left wing on that side. So you can see now my I'm going to line up the dies and that little X is the top of the wing. And then we'll be die cutting that little circle out as well. So again here, I'm gonna do the same thing, just line up the left side and tape that down. And then I'll grab the die for the little chick and I'll tape that down with a little bit of purple tape as well. We'll run all of these through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. And now you can see that we've got the left side and the right side of our wings die cut. So don't worry about that middle part, that's gonna get hidden. See, it's gonna get tucked behind our little chick there. To create the little pull tab, we're using the Lawn Cuts and Stencil. That's the stencil there. And these are the Waving Pull Tab Starter Set dies. So I've got all of these little pieces. Now I'm gonna cut the little tab out of the sticky note cardstock, and then I'll cut these two pieces out of some 100 pound cardstock. We'll set those, those other pieces aside for now, and I'm gonna run these through my Spellbinders Platinum machine. 
So now I've got all my little pieces die cut and you can see on these little wings there's a little X which will be the top of the wing and then that circle gets die cut. So we're going to line up that circle with the circle on the pull tab and we're going to do that for both of these and we're going to take that little brad and slide it from the back towards the front and then we're going to place these two wings on here. Again you want the little X's at the top. So we're going to slide those two wings on and then we're just going to open up that brad. And you do want to use the smallest brad you have here. The little mini brads are the best. So now I'm just going to make sure that that moves around a little bit here. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to just set this aside for now so we can work on some other things. So set those aside and I'm going to take some sticky note cardstock. And I'm going back to the largest rectangle die that we used before. And I'm going to just run the bottom section of this through my die cutting machine. I don't need all of this. And then that will give me stitching on the left and right side and along the bottom edge. And I'm going to cut this down to a one inch panel. That's just going to be the little base for our presents to sit on. So now using my fossilized amber distress oxide ink pad, I'm going to go ahead and just ink up the top edge of this just to give it a little bit of a shadow here. So now I've got the two plaid panels and they're going to line up at the very top here. Not at the top of the card, just with each other. So I don't want to put this on the card yet. I just want to get these two lined up at the very top. And you'll see there will be a little white border on the card. So now I'm just determining where that little uh, pull tab needs to be. So I can go to the blue sky portion here and I can die cut the little notch from the top of this panel. So I'm going to center this right along the top edge of this panel. I'm taping it down with some purple tape and then I want to determine where those two little slots are going to be cut out. So I'm lining up. I'm using that little stencil that comes with the die set and I'm just going to line up that die right inside there. So everything is lined up with the notch at the top and now I can place that little slot die right inside that stencil. I'm going to tape that down with some purple tape. And now I can go ahead and run this through the die cutting machine. I'm going to run that through a couple of times just to make sure it cuts all the way through because we do have two pieces of cardstock here. I want to make sure we get a nice clean cut. And now you can see I have the notch cut out at the top and the two little slots cut out. So now I can go ahead and take my pull tab with the wings and just slide those wings right through those openings and I'm going to just make sure that moves around a little bit here. And now I want to make sure that little tab on the back is centered and I'm going to cut away any excess. So if it's too long just cut away the bottom section there. And you want to make sure that pull tab is pushed all the way down so it's level with that blue background before you cut away that excess. So I'm going to position this tab, this pull tab in place. So I've got my little stabilizer bar here. I'm just, it's got some score lines on it. I'm going to fold on those score lines and then I'm going to place some tape right along that middle section on the back side of this stabilizer. I'm going to use some quarter inch Lawn Fawn double sided tape. I want something nice and secure here so this won't move around. I'm removing the backing from that and then I'm going to just line this up. I want to make sure this is nice and straight and I want to make sure that tab is pushed all the way down. And then I'm going to line this up right underneath those two little notches that stick out there, right there because that's going to be a little stopper so that this doesn't push down too far. So now I'll put a little tape on that tab and then I'll just close this up. And again that's going to act as the little stopper for this pull tab. Now 
Now I can go ahead and put this little piece right at the top here. This will be the little arrow so they'll know just to pull there and something interesting is going to happen there. So I'm just folding that right on the score line and I'm going to attach that with some glue. Now you'll want to put tape on both sides of those tabs, but we're going to set that aside for now. We're going to go ahead and attach this plaid panel to the front of our card, and I'm just centering it on the front of the card. Now I've got tape, and I'm doubling up the Scotch foam mounting tape here just to make sure that my mechanism flows nice and easily. I don't want any double-sided tape near the mechanism itself. I've also doubled up the tape on this bottom panel and I'm going to place that right along the plaid frame here. Then I'm going to remove the backing and attach this front panel. Again, you don't want any tape near that pull tab. So I've got it on the right and left side of that blue panel. So using the double layer of tape is going to make that mechanism move nice and easily here. So now I'll add a little bit of foam tape right between those two wings there and attach my little chick. And again, that's just going to give a little space for that to move around. Now let's grab the strings that hold these little packages. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that with some black ink. And this stamp also has a coordinating die, so I'm going to go ahead and die cut that. Again, running that through my Sizzix Sidekick machine, and I'm just taping this down with a little bit of purple tape. Now, I also want to stamp and die cut the, another little beak, because I am going to tuck this string up under his beak there. So I stamped and die cut and colored in a second beak, and I'm going to go ahead and attach these strings. I want to put a little glue on those sh short strings, on the front side and then some glue on the back side of those longer strings. Once I have that glued together, I'm going to add a little bit of foam mounting tape to the package here. And that's going to hang from his little beak there, so I think I'm going to put it on a little bit of an angle there. And then I'll place that second beak right over the top of this first one. And so it'll look like he's holding that little string in his beak here. Now I can go ahead and just figure out where I want all my little packages to go here. So it just looks like he's just delivering and dropping off a whole bunch of birthday gifts here. And then from this set, I'm going to use the Happy Birthday, and these are the Simply Sentiments. So I'll go ahead and stamp that. Now I want to die cut this, so I'm using the Everyday Sentiments Banner dies, and I'm using that medium size one. And I'm going to slide it over towards the right a little bit and cut. And then to make this a little bit shorter, now I'm just going to position this on the right side and move that notch in closer to the Y on the birthday. And I just want to make sure it's lined up. I'll tape that down and then we'll run that through. And that'll just shorten up this banner just a little bit and give us those notches on both sides. So now I'll add a little bit of that salty ocean around the edges of this banner. I'll use some of that quarter inch double sided tape and we'll just center this up towards the top of the card here. Now I decided to add some balloons so I'm using the really high five stamp set and we're going to use that smaller balloon. I'm going to stamp three of these. And then I'll go ahead and attach the coordinating die and die cut these. So 
So once those are all set, I'll use Coral, Pale Pink, and the Citrus Green Blend to do my coloring. Now you could have colored these before you die cut them. It might be a little easier, but I just taped this down just to make it easier to color this in. And I'm using the light, and then I'm just gonna use the medium on the edges here around the two sides, then the darkest color on the two sides, and then I'll pull that all in towards the center here, keeping the middle of these balloons the lightest. So I use that same technique for all of these balloons. And now I can go ahead and figure out where I want these to be on the card here. Now this set does come with some strings that you can stamp and die cut, but I decided just to use my Zig Millennium Pen and just draw my own little strings here. I wanted them just to be the right length, so I'm just gonna draw those in. And then I'll use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to attach those balloons. So you can do this either way. You could stamp these little strings if you wish. Uh, if you're going to do that, I would probably do that before I attach this card together. But I just found it really simple just to draw in the, the uh, little strings that I needed. Now, once I had those balloons attached, I decided to add a little sentiment to each of those balloons. So I'm going back to this cute little set that we're using here, and I'm gonna grab some of those little tiny sentiments. So the, for the first one, I'm grabbing the X's and O's. And I thought this added a lot to these little balloons. And then for the next one, I'm gonna use hugs. And for that last one, I'm gonna use chirp chirp. Now with my Nouveau Crystal Glaze, this will just give a nice clear glaze finish to the little beak here and just add a little dimension as well. So let me give you a closer look at the card. This is a top folding A2 size card and you can see all the cute little elements we have on this card. And we've got that little pull tab and again, I'll list all the supplies I used today down below and also on my blog. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.